At what point, if you're in the hospital, should you be refused treatment and care? Never. People are not money-making machines. It is inhumane to make money from someone who is sick and dying and needs care. Nutrition and hydration is another important thing that we need to touch on. And the reason that it's important is because that is the way that many people are being killed, literally killed, in healthcare situations today. Their food and water is being taken away, they're being sedated or given morphine to cover up to mask the pain that it causes. So you need to be aware of when it is acceptable, morally right, to take away food and fluids. Ella had a nothing by mouth order put on the end of her bed. Ella's daughter had come in from the East Coast and told the nurses that her mother wouldn't want to go to a nursing home. Her mother had a broken hip. So the nurses, without a doctor's order, put a nothing by mouth order on the mother's bed at the daughter's request. For six days, Ella cried for water, according to the roommate. And nobody gave her water because she had this NPO, or this nothing by mouth order on the end of her bed. They assumed that she was getting ready for surgery or whatever, but nobody investigated. Ella eventually died of dehydration in a hospital in Minneapolis without any food and water for six days. That really woke me up. How could something like this happen in a hospital in the United States? It sounded like Nazi Germany or something. It didn't sound like something that would happen here. But it was true. All of this was true and nothing happened to the hospital. We have to look at what is actually happening. If we take away food and fluids from this person, what will the result be? If the result will be that they die from dehydration and starvation rather than their underlying condition, it's the wrong thing to do. I want people to know that healthcare has become a threat to their lives in many instances. And I'm not saying we can't trust some doctors and some hospitals and some hospices and some palliative care specialists. What I'm saying is that overall medical ethics have changed. They've changed from a sanctity of life ethic to a quality of life ethic.